Finding your personality type is like running a marathon inside your own head. But that race on top of your neurons never ends and it's so easy to get tangled up on all those different connections. Who am I really and how do I determine my personality type? Am I really an introvert or am I rather an extrovert? These are all questions that you might have, but at the end of this video, I hope they're gone. I hope that you know yourself better and I hope that you have a better understanding of yourself. Using this video, I've developed a single method and I call it triangulation. And triangulation is a simple tool that you can use to better understand yourself and your own thought process. So to get started, what I want you to do is I want you to think of three personality types that you have or feel some sort of connection to. For example, that might be the INFP, the INTP and the ENTP. Now, after thinking about these things, I want you to draw a triangle. And I want you to imagine that first of all, the INTP shares a strong connection to the INFP and the ENTP personnel type. So what I want you to do is draw two straight lines between the INFP and the INTP and the INTP and the ENTP. Third, what I want you to do is I want you to draw a dashed line between the INFP and the ENTP personnel type, as these two don't share as much in common. What I want you to do after that is I want you to, in the middle of this triangle, write down the two letters that all of these three types have in common. And this is actually quite simple. The INFP, the INTP and the ENTP all share two things in common and that is intuition and perceiving. Now, we're going to go into the cognitive functions in a second here, and I'm going to show you what all these connections mean. But before we get into that, what I want you to do is I want you to think about the personal type that you wrote down with the two straight lines. What does it mean that the INTP was in the center of these three types? Well, what it really means is that this is your most likely personality type. Yeah, the personality type that is in the middle of these two different personality types is the personal type that you are most likely going to be. However, that's not conclusive evidence of your personal type. Not right now. You don't know for sure yet if you really are that personal type. So how do you determine it? Well, what I want you to imagine is that those two letters you wrote in the center of that triangle most likely formulate the basis of your self-awareness. Those two letters showcase your most differentiated and most conscious version of yourself you are most conscious of your preference for intuition and for perceiving. And that means something. That means those two letters signify the personality traits that are the most well-developed in you. And this shows something. It shows something really fascinating. What I've found is that most people will never find one personality type that they identify with 100% of the time. In fact, every single person has their own individual development. What that means is you have a unique way of thinking and approaching the world. Yeah, instead of thinking of personal type as something fixed, I want you to think of it as a spectrum. The cognitive functions, according to Carl Jung, actually meant nothing, nothing at all. They were never meant to reference eight distinct neuroscientific processes. We might never find eight specific processes that exactly encompass what Carl Jung was talking about. Rather, the cognitive functions are a language, a tool that we can use to describe how we think and how we make decisions, how we process information. So, by using the cognitive functions, you can gain a higher sense of understanding of yourself and who you are and how you think. However, that doesn't mean that how you think is a specific process that exists in all of us and is the same for every single person. Rather, what we're going to find is most likely everyone has developed differently. There are 6 billion people on Earth. Is it really fair to say that we all share the same development and the same way of thinking? Obviously not. What's rather more likely to be true is that we all tend to have certain functions that we relate to more than others or certain personality types that we exist on the boundary of. Perhaps it's difficult to type yourself because you're kind of in between a set of different personality types. Now, let's find out how to make it a bit easier and how to get a bit more of reassurance and a little bit more of self-awareness through determining your personality type on this spectrum. Think about the personality type that was in the middle here. For example, for the INTP connecting to the ENTP and the INFP, I want you to think about the INTP here, and I want you to draw two more lines in dashes. 
these two dashed lines will draw into two other personality types that neighbor this personality type. So if the INTP neighbors to the INFP and the ENTP, you can also assume that INTP neighbors to the INTJ and to the ISTP personnel type. Now these two are in dashed lines to mark that this is most likely not your personnel type. However, they do form a compass, an interesting compass, your personality type compass. Now, the INTP that goes more towards ISTP is an INTP with a more sensory development with stronger SI. An INTP that goes more towards INTJ is an INTP that has a stronger judging development, more towards decision making and long term goals, and that would mark an INTX. An INTP that goes more towards ENTP most likely has a strong extroverted development and a strong connection to extroverted intuition. And an INTP that is a little bit on the boundary of INFP or INTP most likely has a strongly introverted and perceiving development, IP. Now, these are the four potential subtypes of the INTP personality type, four different ways for an INTP to develop. So, you already know that as an INFP, INTP, ENTP hybrid, most likely your development is a little bit more towards the intuitive and the perceiving side. That means you're probably abstaining more from judging, you're probably less goal-oriented, you're probably less long-term, and you're probably less sensory about how you go about things. So intuition and perceiving form your fundamental sense of self while you have doubts on whether you're an extrovert or an introvert or whether you are a feeling type or a thinking type. So how do we determine these things? Well, what I recommend is formulating a type hypothesis. Okay, so imagine you're an INTP. Imagine that is your most likely possibility. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to, for the next week, challenge yourself to be more introverted and to be stronger in your thinking preference. What that means is go to your own mountain and formulate your own thoughts and formulate your own logic and reason. Take more time to yourself and set more boundaries for your own needs. Allow yourself to be more quiet around people and to be more analytical in your approach to the world. Try to think more logically about what's happening around you and try to break the world down into answers and discernment and decision making. What is better? What is worse? What do I like more and what do I like less? What is above and what is below? How do things function? How do they work? Something I've always found is that personality type says nothing about your current level of behavior. You actually have an ideal type, a flow type, and that flow type marks who you are at your very best. If you find that by being more introverted and being more analytical and being more thinking in your judgment, you'll find that you have more energy, more motivation and more confidence, that says something about you. It says something about who you are at your very best. Now, on the other hand, if you found that by doing these things, you found yourself having more stress in your life, more anxiety and less motivation, that says something too. That says that your hypothesis is probably incorrect. So if your hypothesis was correct and you got more energy from it, congratulations, that says something. And if your hypothesis was a failure, well, congratulations again, that says something too. Instead of trying to find your personnel type by taking questionnaires and personnel tests online, I recommend formulating up this hypothesis and going out to the real world and doing experiments. How can you challenge yourself to be more thinking in your work, in your lifestyle and in your relationships? After watching this video, you have a compass to work from. You can work from these different angles, northwest, south or east, or rather introversion or extroversion, intuition or sensing, feeling or thinking, judging or perceiving. Test all of it. See how you respond to all these things. See in what ways you are an introvert. See in what ways you're an intuitive. See what ways you are thinking and see which ways you are perceiving and start studying the cognitive functions. Start recognizing that nobody is a true introvert 100% of the time, all the time. Notice that you have your own unique introverted style. So perhaps you might learn that you benefit from certain forms of introversion, but not others. Perhaps it's important for you to 
balance between having time to think and form your own opinion, but also time to experiment in the real world and to test things out using extrovert intuition. All these lessons are going to be helpful for you, so start breaking down why your hypothesis failed or why it was successful. What exactly did you do and what forms of introversion did you engage in? What forms of intuition did you exercise and what forms of sensing are you engaged with? What forms of thinking do you engage with? What forms of logic do you tend to apply? What forms of perceiving do you tend to engage in? And what forms of judgment do you tend to apply? What I've found is that no person is one personality type 100% of the time. You're probably going to be a little bit in between a certain amount of personality types, yet you're going to find that you have one or two personality types you keep coming back to. And that says something about you. So rather than seeking absolute certainty for one personality type, seek instead to learn as much as possible about yourself and learn why you keep coming back to these two personality types. It's not about which personality type you define yourself as, it's about how much you really know about yourself. How well do you know yourself? What you like, what you value, what's important to you? The better you know yourself, the better the decisions you can make, the smarter the actions and the lifestyle you can live, and the more flow and the more energy and motivation and confidence you can experience. Now to learn more about the flow states, I recommend you check out these videos and I also recommend browsing and learning more about the subtypes and your own unique development. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.